Tennessee state representatives Justin Jones, Justin Pearson, and Gloria Johnson have become a national inspiration. Their protest in the State House gallery to demand stricter gun safety measures following a mass shooting at a school in Nashville resulted in the expulsion of Jones and Pearson. Briefly, they were reinstated days later by the governing bodies of their respective local jurisdictions. Now, the Tennessee Three, as they're known, are taking their message for change beyond the volunteer state. Earlier this week, they were at the White House at the invitation of President Biden, who thanked them for having the courage to speak out against gun violence. And joining me now is Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones. Representative Jones, welcome back to The Sunday Show, and thank you for coming in live in studio. Thank you so much. Good to be here, Jonathan. So uh, you came to town for last night's White House Correspondents' Dinner. How were you received? Yeah, um... People were very supportive. We know that um, it was an event celebrating the First Amendment. And so we've um, been fighting for the First Amendment and fighting for democracy, which we know you as journalists are key and vital in. And so I um, was grateful to be there and see a lot of familiar faces. So you, so in the intro, I talked about the fact that you were expelled for um, speaking out mm. about gun violence and you were uh, exp expelled from, from the body. We look at you as, you know, you're fighting for gun safety. But I noticed you put an emphasis on First Amendment and what that dinner was about last night. Talk about why it was so important for, for the three of you to speak out on a message that went beyond the specific thing you were protesting, which was gun violence. Definitely. I mean, our expulsion really was this collision of these, these three issues of... of fighting for an end to mass shootings and proliferation of guns in our communities. Also fighting to defend democracy and voices of dissent, um, challenging authoritarian um, forces within um, our nation right now. And then third was the issue of, of systemic racism. You, you saw that Pierce and I are the youngest black representatives and we were expelled. And so we saw this collision of those three issues. And, and it really does transcend just one issue. Um, and our movement transcends one issue because we, we live uh, multi-issue lives. And so fighting for democracy, seeing, um, you know, a lot of emphasis last night at the Correspondence Center on protecting journalists particularly those who are jailed right now across the mm -hmm. globe for doing their job. And so we know that the First Amendment, we know that fighting for democracy, we know that a free press to hold power accountable is vital um, if we're going to continue to move forward and, and, and represent the future that I hope my generation mm -hmm. wants to bring forth in this world. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about something that goes beyond Tennessee. And I'm thinking of Montana. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of efforts there to silence the opposition? And I'm thinking about um, Montana State Representative Zoe Zephyr, who was expelled from the House, state House floor. She can't even go on the House floor um, to speak on behalf of her constituents. She can vote re remotely, meaning outside, outside there in the hall. How does what's happening to her fit into what happened to you? Yeah, I mean... I talked to Representative Zephyr um, a couple times since um, she's been expelled, including the night she was expelled. We were on an interview together. And as I said that, that evening, if you come for one of us, you come for all of us. These, these, this is an issue about challenging um, a system that seeks to suppress the voice of those directly impacted by these issues. And so Representative Zephyr was challenging anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans legislation in her state. Um, was the only openly, uh, oh, excuse me, as the only trans member of that body. And was silenced, was, 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 ousted from, from the floor as a duly elected lawmaker. That is not democracy. That is not what our system should be about challenging those who represent the very issues that we're discussing, mm -hmm. deliberating. I mean, it is, it is very scary. And, and as we said in Tennessee, if Tennessee went forward with our expulsion, it would set a very dangerous precedent. Right. And we saw this in Montana. We're seeing this, the same discussion in Nebraska right now. I mean, and, and if it was really about decorum, Jonathan, we wouldn't be having folks like Marjorie Greene Taylor in our Congress right now who continue to break decorum and are not held accountable. We would, we would have accountability for January 6th. So it's not about decorum, it's about silencing dissent. That's what their, that's what their mission is. Mm -hmm. uh, you are an intern here in Washington with Congresswoman Barbara Lee. And anyone who watches this show saw the two of you uh, uh, on camera. Uh, so you know how this town works. Now that you're a legislator yourself, why do you think nothing substantive gets done on, on gun safety. You know, there's a, a new mm -hmm. Fox, Fox News poll out mm -hmm. that yeah. shows not just overwhelming support, yeah. super majority support for just about every piece of common sense gun safety legislation. Mm -hmm. Why can't anything get done if, as you see there on the screen, more than 80%, almost 87% support background checks for guns? 
Yeah. Why can't it get done at a national level? It's it's a it's an issue of political courage. I mean, the majority of, of Americans, as you sh as you just shown, Republicans, Independents, Democrats, including in my state, Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, support these common sense gun laws. But it's about political courage, about standing up to these special interests like the NRA and putting the lives of our children over the profits of firearms manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And so that's why our generation, we're bringing this urgency, we're bringing this sense of moral clarity that transcends partisan politics. Say that this is bigger than left or right. It is a moral issue of right or wrong. And that's what I told the president on Monday that this is a moral issue. And I'm not coming to the White House as a political leader. I'm coming to lift up this moral voice of our generation and say that we have to c treat this like an emergency because these we had another shooting yesterday. Right. Five lost their lives. Right. I mean, this keeps happening, and, and we need, must break this cycle. I don't want to live in a generation that de this defines our generation, from Sandy Hook to the Pulse nightclub massacre to Covenant Elementary to Kentucky. I mean, this, is, this keeps happening, and it we don't have to live this way. And I think that's what Americans are asking for us to act. In a state like my state, we have a uh, NRA-endorsed governor, Republican governor who's supposedly going to be calling a special session on guns, that shows that the, the conversation is moving forward. And if we can transform a state like Tennessee, I think we can transform this nation and pass common sense gun laws at the nationwide level. We, we showed um, a video of your meeting in the Oval Office mm -hmm. with, with the president, uh, the three of you you see there. There's one other person in, in that picture, and that's the vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris. What did she say to you? Um, VP Harris... Um, was immediately came to Nashville after we ex were expelled, as you know. It took an emergency trip, and um, that day she reiterated something that she reiterated, reiterated, excuse me, reiterated the day after we were expelled. That is, um, sometimes people have to rise to an occasion, and so she lifted up um, us rising in this moment, in this Kairos moment as a generation. Um, she gave one of the most powerful speeches I heard her give really? at Fisk University. That really was a revival for this movement. That really was a resurgence of the energy that says there's urgency about fighting for our democracy, that we have a moral obligation that, you know, in Tennessee, we have a history of young people leading movements like John Lewis and Diane Nash. And so to have the vice president and, and just that prophetic voice uh, for action really was moving. And to see her there, uh, as you saw, we were sitting by each other. She just really um, is somebody who I know stands with us and is very authentic and is very powerful um, in this movement right now. I'm trying to hold it together. I don't know. Every time I'm on camera with you, I'm, I'm always about to cry because to see you, someone so young, um, speak so passionately and eloquently about our nation and who we can and should be is what gives me so much hope about the future. Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones, thank you very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. Thank you so much.